it's wonderful to have you all back here for a fifth season. Time flies. We started this in September of 2020, right in the middle of COVID, which we thought we would go away in a month or two, and then another month or two, and then another month or two. And here we are in our fifth season through COVID, trying to keep our sanity by having conversations that we missed dearly with our friends from all around the world. And what did we do? We started a talk show where we could invite them so we could have these conversations, if not physically and uh, you know, uh, in the same space, but at least virtually. It's really a pleasure to have you back here. I'm your host, Abhay Wadhwa. Uh, this is uh, the first premiere show of season five. And I'm thrilled to host again, one of my favorite guests, an erudite scholar of sound and therapy who has uh, dedicated most of her life um, helping uh, people heal, get, get into better selves, uh, and by using sound and related modalities. Uh, so please join me in welcoming Mandara Cromwell. She's based in Georgia. We would spend the next 50 odd minutes uh, discussing her work and uh, her modalities uh, that she's been utilizing for uh, helping people. So welcome Mandara, it's wonderful to have you back. How have you been? Thank you, Thank you Abe. It's great to be here with you and all of the people who are watching. It's uh, a great new year. And I'm very excited to be here with all of you. Speaking about today, which will be of interest to um, all of us is how do we understand the different sheets, the different bodies that uh, we all possess? Uh, nothing spiritual or religious about it. It's uh, as commonplace as uh, air and water. Here is my picture on the left side of your screen. I wrote a book. So if you really want to know more information about me, you can read the book. Um, but basically, I spend my time, my life, um, working with sound. And so I research specific sound frequencies. I uh, create uh, compositions of these frequencies, and I embed them in specific products to deliver them to the body to help people with their health. All of the sound frequencies I use are audible sound. Uh, and so these are the products that I um, I'll be sharing with you today and how I use these in my research uh, for helping people with their health. And um, my background really started from childhood when I attended a, a Gothic style uh, church, uh, grew up in the Catholic faith and um, then traveled after college to India. And I realized that these specific structures, these architects, had created these outer structures to um, harness some health and harmony for us. Their insights came from, which you can see on the, the bottom row here, floor plans that reflect the human body. So I had personal experiences with this and, and these types of structures were my first teachers of the principles of resonance and entrainment. When I would enter these types of architecture, I could feel vibrations as I would stand under the gnome, uh, the domes or um, the arcs, the spires, all of them had different types of feelings or, or vibrations that I sensed within my body. And somehow or another, I had this connection that, wow, the structure, the outer structure is like an outer part of my body. And it was, you know, resonating with at a cellular level within my body, as I found throughout my studies. And so um, these architects built these uh, structures to harness these energies I discovered. And um, so what we're going to talk about today is a network of communication not just, and so I'm telling you that I discovered it through art and architecture, and it led me to believe that when I um, traveled to India and studied Ayurveda and the teachings there, that there is this very definite communication of an inner network that we need to pay attention to. And so these are known as the five sheets or the five layers of being, we all have them. Um, in the ancient tradition of Ayurveda, they're known as the five koshas, but they're simply put as that we have 
a physical body and subtle bodies. And researchers today are validating this knowledge. We're finding this everywhere in our science that through these ancient traditions of uh, the Vedic sciences and it, Chinese medicine, these systems that have been around for thousands of years, today science is now validating, maybe in their own vocabulary, but the principle, the concept is the same. And so the researchers today are validating this knowledge of the five layers of being. They are discovering that there's a life force field connecting our physical and subtle bodies. And so I displayed them in an illustration in the right-hand side of your screen in a horizontal fashion. And to the very right, I don't know if you can see the very right uh, side of the screen, but some people um, call this the concept of the nesting dolls or, you know, as children uh, or as a child, I received a set of Russian dolls that were nesting, fitting one inside the other. And so you can kind of think of uh, this uh, as a visual of these five bodies in that fashion as well. And so in the Vedic tradition, I discovered that each of these bodies resonates with its own sound. That sound is really the thread that uh, links all of these uh, bodies together and, and their great interplay. And so the first body is the physical body. And uh, this is very easy to understand because we all are, are aware of our physical bodies. The sound that we can relate to with the physical body could be the heartbeat. This is our own internal drum that keeps us at a, a, certain, uh, a certain beat. The second level, uh, second body is uh, called the vital energy body. And in the Vedic tradition, this is known as the prana body. In the Chinese tradition, this is the qi body. And it's most closely related to our respiratory system, our breath. So the breath of life, you know, we can live without food, we can live without water, we can live without these things for quite a while, but with the breath, we can't live uh, too long without. So this is the vital energy body that really helps to feed the physical body. And the third body is uh, known as our, our mental body. Our thoughts and our emotions are stored here. And you might identify with this if you're if this a whole concept of the five layers of being is very foreign to you. This is where we hear sound. In this body, this is where the senses all come together. Uh, you might find that sometimes you're um, filled with mental chatter. This is what's happening in, in this body. Uh, all of our thoughts and uh, emotions, if you've ever heard the, um, um, term of chakras or nadis or the meridian system. This is all coming into play here in this body. So we'll talk more about this in just a little bit. The fourth body is known as the wisdom body. This is our, our higher mind. Uh, you may have experienced this in times of when you've been really quiet or you've gotten into the shower and that great uh, thought, that great idea comes crashing through a, a solution to a problem. And so this is when we're kind of in that state of being very quiet and there's a little portal that opens up and that thought that um, maybe that idea you're driving in the car and you usually go a certain way, but that day you're guided to take another direction. That's when that inner wisdom, that higher wisdom, that intuition, that creative thought comes to you and says, hey, I think I'll take this route today. Later, you find out that by taking that route, you avoided a whole pileup or a bunch of construction. So this is where we, we tune into to the higher mind, the intuition, the wisdom body. And then the fifth body, our very highest, most refined body is called the bliss body or um, the state of higher consciousness. And the sound that we hear here is a very subtle sound. And when people are in deep states of meditation, they connect with the sound here. It's called the sound current. 
and you've tapped in. So each of these bodies are interpenetrating the other. And there's this common thread of sound. Some of the sounds are very audible in some of these bodies and some of the sounds are very subtle. But as we go into the finer bodies, that sound is extremely subtle and we access it by becoming very quiet. And usually this is uh, you know, through meditation or some silent contemplation. What we have found is that the complete healing, when we're suffering from some illness or injury, that the complete healing takes place when there's coherence of all of these bodies, the physical and the subtle bodies. And in Ayurveda, um, we call the cause of disease is known as the mistake of intellect. The mind and the body lose their connection to the whole. And here I've created some separation within the bodies so that you can begin to visualize possibly what this might look like within your own body as you're not feeling well. Uh, right now we're in what's usually known as the cold and flu season. And a lot of people are experiencing maybe a little tickle in their throat or a little sore throat or head congestions, uh, those types of things. Those are the beginnings of signs of, of some weak connection where we need to pay attention to help our body to realign. Um, Ayurveda views disease as an opportunity. We look at this as a little tap on the shoulder, a prompt that says, hey, let's pause here. We're not feeling so well. Let's go take a nap and regroup and let's use this opportunity to really nurture ourselves. And usually it's a disconnect of the physical body. We've been driving too hard. Hey, let's face it. This is a really fun world to operate in. And sometimes we overdo. We eat too much, we have too much fun, we extend ourselves at work, our mental um, body is, is really cranking away at solving a problem. And what we wanna do is take a step back and say, hey, this is my opportunity to draw within and reconnect our bodies. So Ayurveda says for the complete healing to take place, we must restore the memory of pure consciousness in every cell. So um, let's take a look at Western medicine because uh, a lot of us are familiar with Western medicine. This is how we grew up. And Western medicine focuses only on the physical body. And so if we look at this, this is really only a very small portion of the whole picture. This totally limits the repertoire of solutions that might be out there for us to help us with our illness. And as we tap into the knowledge of the five bodies, the physical and the subtle bodies, we can have a really profound impact on our ability to heal. So what I do is I use sound. I have discovered through my studies in, in Ayurveda and Chinese medicine that sound is a very profound modality to help people. And as I mentioned before, I use specific sound patterns, which um, I call AMI frequency patterning. And these are a series of five frequencies. So it's like a little quintet that's playing. And this therapy is administered transdermally. And here you see a device, my device on the left, where people sit comfortably in a chair and they put their feet on the device and the um, sounds run for uh, approximately 30 minutes. And so this sound is traveling, it's creating this force field all around the bodies. And so the sound is, is connecting to the sound of each of the bodies. And the benefits of using this, I have found in my research and people report back to me, we've done some studies, that they have the, a relief of stress and pain and inflammation. And these are the three really big issues that underlie um, all of the chronic conditions that are out there. A lot of people uh, experience an increase in vitality for people who've gotten to a place where their physical body is just very uh, disconnected from the other bodies and they aren't having any energy. And uh, we have sounds that help 
support the uh, body systems, the cardiovascular, the respiratory, immune, and uh, digestive. So what I wanna do is share with you a couple of case studies here today. And um, this is the um, patient Bill who came to us after experiencing heartburn for two years. And I'll show uh, you here his physical effects and then the connection to the other layers of his being. So for the first three months, Bill told us that he had been using over-the-counter digestive aids to help with his heartburn. Month four, he took a more serious approach and started taking prescription medication from his doctor. Uh, on month five, he started noticing the onset of some side effects. And over this period of from month five to when he came to us at the two year mark, these symptoms included nausea, dizziness, headaches, constipation, gas, bloating, insomnia, mood swings, sexual dysfunction, and overall fatigue. So you can see that he wasn't um, feeling really great. In his work life, we always ask people what's happening in the other parts of your life. In his work life, he said, well, things were uh, kind of stagnant, that things are starting to look a little dismal as far as a promotion. His boss had been coming along previously and uh, giving him a little slap on the back saying, hey, good job. This is really uh, good. You're in the right direction. And that hadn't been happening lately. As a matter of fact, he'd been feeling a lot of tension from his boss. He didn't know if that was because of his performance or because of the tension the boss was feeling. It could have been either, but he was missing those nice compliments, those assurances. In his personal life, eating out became a nightmare. He just couldn't go out to eat anymore. There was no more getting together with his friends for games and no date night dinners with his girlfriend. It was a real strain on his relationship. And she was actually the person who prompted him to seek out some help from another perspective, that he had tried the pharmaceuticals and those didn't seem to be working very well. What else is out there? So Bill came to us and in the intake process, we um, asked, do you remember your first heartburn experience? And he said, yes. He ate two chili dogs. They were very spicy at a ball game. Now, not everybody remembers where their issue first started, but with Bill, he clearly remembered that day was a huge blow up on the inside uh, from these spicy chili dogs. And so then I asked him, do you enjoy your work? He said, most of the time. And I said, do you sit in an office or a car most of the time? And he said, yes, he sat most of the time at a desk at, in front of his computer. I said, do you like the people you work with? And he had this distinct tightness in his face that, you know, there was something there. So I went forward and I said, hey, were there any of the people from work with you at the ball game? And he said, yes. So the next step, I said, what happened that may have upset you? Now, some people are forthcoming with this information and some people are not because, hey, they've just met us. They don't know us. And, and sometimes when you're in a new situation, you might feel a little vulnerable. But in this case, Bill confessed. He said, yeah, there were two guys from work and one childhood friend who joined him at the game. And he said, you know, guys razz each other. In this case, his childhood friend had brought up an embarrassing situation that Bill thought his friend would keep private. And now Bill feels embarrassed that his workmates know about it. So embarrassment is a, is a little key here. There's probably some other issues going on too, but basically embarrassment is the shame or guilt you feel when an inadequacy is made public. So we didn't go further with anything in Bill's emotional body, but we just stored this information. Here in the five layers of being, we see that Bill, I've colored him red because there's a lot of fire in his digestive tract. He's very annoyed here and all, with all of the symptoms that he's uh, experiencing here, this is clear digestive distress. And in Ayurveda, we look at 
uh, the symptom of the stomach, you know, all, all um, uh, disturbances begin in the digestive process. We're not digesting properly. We're not, he's having an inability to even think about uh, his thoughts and emotions or anything else in his life. In his vital energy body, the prana, the chi, the respiratory system, where this wonderful air, this, this enlivening force field that really needs to um, support the physical body is collapsed. When we sit all day, when we sit and, you know, it's our sedentary lifestyles that we um, are, are experiencing today, that we're all kind of hunched over, all of these um, inner organs are being crunched and the air is not circulating. The blood is not circulating very well. And so we've, we've closed down that body. We've diminished the connection there to that body. His thoughts and his, and his emotions, he's got this constant self-talk, this chatter of negative thoughts of his embarrassing situation. Um, maybe it's not specifically about that situation, but he's something is eating at him, so to speak. And this is resulting in his um, irritable behavior in his relationships at work, in his relationships, uh, in his personal life, particularly with his girlfriend. So all of this, all of these things are, are happening, this interplay, and he has very little connection to that higher mind, who is that intuitive process. The girlfriend, however, has pushed him to this in the sense that she said, hey, maybe there's something outside of the box that we're not looking at. And you know the weak has a very weak connection with his bliss body. He's not feeling in the groove at all, uh, in sync with with anything. So with Bill, um, he is on a, uh, was put on a six week protocol uh, of using the AMI seven fifty this sound device five times a week for two weeks and three times a week for the four following weeks, uh, thirty minutes a session. And so here's his report. After two weeks, he says that he's breathing more easy, easier. Um, he's he's more relaxed, and he's experiencing fewer restless nights. Now he we, we never interfere with uh, what someone is doing with their medical doctor, and, and in many cases, uh, we work with the the physician who is helping them with their physical aspect. And so Bill made an appointment. He got tired of, of all, taking all of the uh, medication. And so he, he himself made an appointment with his um, primary care physician to discuss, could he get off some of these meds that seem to be irritating him? Four weeks, uh, at the four week mark, he's feeling more positive. He's not spending so much time trapped in that thought cycle of that mental chatter, of, you know, how he's, um, you know, not really um, good enough where he's falling short in his work life, where he's falling short in, his, in, in himself. Um, that embarrassing situation seems to be diminishing. There's less tension at work and at home and things seem to be running a bit more smooth. And um, so, and he has been uh, coming uh, off his meds uh, a bit. Um, so six weeks, this is the end of the, the session, the, his six week protocol. He says he feels much more relaxed and that the thought actually occurred to him that the guys are not focused on that embarrassing experience at all. That maybe he created that embarrassing connection himself. And he only thought that they were seeing him through that view. And he did say that when I get on that sound device, I feel more free. I feel more like myself. And he said, the good news is I'm back to eating out with my girlfriend. So this is what we see in the reconnection through sound. Um, you know, the last time we spoke with Bill that he came in uh, for a session, he's, uh, he's not on his medication anymore and he's eating basically anything he wants to now. Now, there might be some other things associated with Bill uh, that he might want to work on, but this is the end of our case study with Bill. So at the two-week mark, um, I use a device called the Veda Pulse 
uh, device, which is a, a computerized device to help track. And uh, we did a, a baseline here. You see it tracks the, uh, the major 12 systems of the body. And I don't know if you can see to the right side of your screen that the legend is, is that red is high tension and green is balance and yellow means there's a, a depletion, there's a deficiency there in that system. And so right here we see his liver has, is firing some red. Uh, this is not a surprise to us because in Ayurveda and Chinese medicine, the liver is the or, organ that um, harbors, that stores our, our anger and our frustration. And so to bring that into uh, a coherence, you see in just two weeks, um, the green is, is what we wanna see. And, and that was really wonderful. It just shows us that we have another backup system that uh, we're on the right track. Of course, we had uh, that there's no greater uh, confirmation than the patient's personal experience uh, sharing of, of, of you know, the better sleep and the ease and tension. So um, what I say is that we restored Bill's con communication network that, uh, and, and I'd like to say that uh, if, if you could think about this in the greater concept of the temples, the outer bodies of those structures that harness that energy, help us to harness the um, coherence of our, our five bodies, our physical body and the four subtle bodies, that our bodies begin to recognize these patterns. And that's what I believe is happening here in the communication network that we work with. And you know, we all have these experiences of, like Bill, embarrassment, of um, feeling guilt or shame or not good enough. The key is, is we don't want that to get stuck. We don't want to, that to get rooted and that it's not moving, that the energy is not moving. And, and the sound has this ability to kind of unstick these uh, emotions that need help. They need a little bit of help to gently move on through. So um, before I move on to talk to you about uh, George and, and uh, his prostate cancer and get into the whole idea of uh, what's happening, the architecture of, of those cells, I have people all the time that ask me, what will sound do for you fill in the blank? For their injury, for their cancer, for their autoimmune system, for their mother's dementia, their father's uh, Parkinson's, you know, what will sound do for this? And so I want to make it clear that my belief is that sound is the foundational fiber in our inner network. I am sharing this information with you um, from my perspective. My goal in this presentation is to introduce you to the body's communication system known as the five layers of being or the five sheets. And this has been known as I have said earlier in the presentation through Ayurveda for thousands of years. And we're just now reconnecting with those ancient traditions in our, our modern sciences is, is validating this. So in my research and clinical observations, I began examining the difficulties that people were having with their health and their quality of life through this lens of the five bodies. I don't always um, introduce them to this connection. I want you to know that I'm using this lens to observe uh, and examine their progress. So I invite all of you to explore regardless of whatever condition or diagnosis that you may have or, or a loved one may have, just explore the possible loss of connection in your body's communication network. The first question uh, that's come in is the nesting dolls, you know, the Russian nesting dolls um, uh, example that you gave. Uh, there are two theories that uh, the inner doll is your physical body and the outer doll is your ananda, your bliss body. And then there's the other theory, which is that the outer body, the outer doll is your physical body and the inner small doll is the 
Ananmay, the bliss body. Which one uh, do you um, uh, follow or subscribe or uh, uh, use for your analysis? Both. <laughs> okay. Because, because all of the bodies interpenetrate each other. So right now we're obvious, uh, what we're, it's very obvious to us, the physical body, but we also feel the energy field around us. And, you know, I've, I've shown in a, another um, interview with you uh, a specific camera that detects the energy field around the body and how we saw emotional impact uh, on the physical body. So the, there is the body and, and actually you can feel it if you put your hands together like this, you can kind of feel the energy bounce back and forth. People who practice um, Tai Chi or, or Qigong, um, they, they feel this energy field. So in that case, we're experiencing the physical body and we're going outer, but the real inner bliss is we become more cognizant of that as we go within. The true experience, we are told, is that we are connected to the whole collective consciousness. And so in that regard, we would um, look at the five layers of sheath as going the physical body out. Mm, okay, understood. But the, true, but the true, to find the true answer within ourselves, you might want to look at it within because it's, we have this feedback from the, our world. We're, we're a mirror to our world. We're getting this feedback like, hey, something's not right. You should take care of yourself. Go home, drink lots of fluids, you know, those types of things. But it's when we're in those still spaces, when we're all the way within, focusing on the inner realms is the key. And see, I believe this is where the connection is with the architecture. We have these structures that the blueprint looks like a human body, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So we have the body there. So is the, uh, are we being guided to visit those inner crevices mm -hmm. and to clean out? And so my theory is that when we go into the temples and the churches and prayers are being sung, the sound, or even if you go when no one else is there, you can't help but sense the vibration within those walls, within those pillars, within those arcs and domes. Mm. And so that is a physical experience within a structure. So if we see the church or the temple plan as our, our physical body, mm -hmm. we're experiencing on the inner. The key is in the inner mm -hmm. that we have to go there to to connect the coherence mm -hmm. that's sorry that's a, that's a long way to no it's a fantastic answer it's just really great thank you appreciate that um another great question that's come in is that you uh, mentioned right at the beginning that a sound that relates that there's a sound that relates to each kosha or to each uh, uh sheath now we know that if there's a frequency sound with every chakra and the micro chakras and the nadis and all of that but um in your experience, could you say that each sheet, like the physical body, has a certain frequency that it responds best to? Or, I mean, it's a, it's a big loaded question, but I'm just wondering if you have a quick answer for that. <laughs> yes. Uh, sorry, what was the question? <laughs> yes, the body does have. Okay, so every organ has its own resonant frequency, right. and right. there's Right. No, I'm, I'm sorry for me. I mean the every sheath, every kosher yes. doesn't have a resident frequency. Yes. If and, we if we focus, we uh -huh. can hear it. I, my belief is that if we and I believe that this is what the Vedic science teaches us, yes. that if we become very quiet and we enter, we follow that sound thread, we enter the sound current, we mm -hmm. actually hear, we can hear uh in, in our, our inner hearing mm. picks up the sound. But is it is it um, is it a hertz level or a frequency level that can be defined? Like with the chakras, we can do the lam vam yam ram kam, you know. But can we have something like that for the koshas, or is that not the concept here? It's really that you need to listen yourself. 
right now it's really that you need to listen to yourself. Okay. Uh, that has been the key. And that is why in, um, you know, when, if you uh, go to a Ayurveda practitioner, they might give you a mantra or a sound or a toning. Some uh, shamans will give you uh, a tone. Mm. Uh, you know, we mm -hmm. have lots of studies of, of people who sing in choirs and conductors and how they have health and longevity because of these sounds. And so they're hit, hitting what we call a sweep, a, a, a frequency range. But you're ask, I think what you're asking me is, can I go to the piano and hit this note and that resonates with the, the, the physical, co uh, the um, um, Ananda Ananda Maya Kosha or, or the Manamaya Kosha or the Ananda Maya Kosha. So, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so you are so typical. <laughs> See, you know, everybody wants the shortcut. <laughs> Well, you know, I, the person who asked the question is listening, I'm sure. <laughs> so, so there's your answer. And um, the last question before we move back to your slides is the example of Bill, who is, uh, we're glad he's doing better. Which kosha, which, which body was he most impacted in? Was it his physical or his uh, pranic, or, you know, the, 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 the mental emotional, the Manamaya Kosha, and I'll go into this in just a, a, a little bit more uh, later in my slides, but let me just say for right now, the Manamaya Kosha is a, a tough uh, one to uh, keep clear because every mm -hmm. time something, uh, you know, B Bill happened to remember, he, he was able to connect his spicy chili dog with the burn that he felt in embarrassment. When was the last time you were embarrassed and you have this heat come over you and your face gets red and maybe you start sweating or, you know, you, you clench your jaw or, oh my gosh, you know, you just, there's a lot of emotional impact with that. Bill was able to connect with that. He was right away. Yeah, that was, that really ticked me off that the, my friend shared a private thing. You know, not only was there the embarrassment, if he mm -hmm. goes further, he would dig up the betrayal and, you know, other, you know, shame, guilt. We, we all have this. We live in this world and we all have that. The key is that we need to keep processing it and gently move it through. Definitely. Letting it go. Yeah. Yeah. And, and letting it go. And so the more we do that, then we can connect to the, um, the, higher the wisdom body the mm. vijnana maya kosha the more we we uh you know work with these energies that we create mm -hmm. within ourselves uh the more we work with that then the finer tune we become right right understood and you know and this i guess we could do offline but it could be bad chili also right it could be a bad dog also i'm glad that you know there were so many animals that were saved because he thought it was a chili dog and he wasn't eating chili dogs but <laughs> on a lighter note the so bad, bad it's I, true it's true you know and you know we'll we'll um you know i'm about to to uh talk to you about uh <laughs> a symptom that we call cancer, you know, and where people go, wow, why did I get this? You know, it could be from the, you know, thoughts and emotions, uh, which are a really strong uh, connection there, but it could be from the environment. It could be from, you know, a toxicity of, of food, of water, of air. You know, we talk about countries who have a lot of air pollution, you know, there's a, a prevalence of disconnect there in, in those bodies. So it can be from, um, from any, really the, the manamaya, the, the, the um, thought and mental body is very key. That's where the senses lie. That's where our thoughts and our emotions, if you study the chakras, that's where all of that information is, is interwoven in the Manamaya Kosha. That's so much fantastic information here. Thank you, Mandara, for sharing your wisdom. So back to you and your beautiful slides, yeah? All of us at Simon Technologies, all of our practitioners, we always work with the medical doctor or, or team that a person um, is, is seeing, okay? 
So I want to introduce you to the work of uh, Dr. Mina Bissell. And when I found her work, this just really uh, connected me even more to the principles of architecture because that's exactly what she studied. She's recognized uh, for her lifetime contributions to the fields of breast cancer research and the enhanced role of the extracellular matrix and the nucleus environment to gene expression in normal and malignant tissues. So I want you to know that she spends her time in a laboratory. Okay, so she's not seeing patients, but she's looking at what, what are the genes expressing? Uh, what does normal tissue look like? What does malignant tissue look like? Her research have ushered and have changed some central paradigms that have strengthened the importance of the context in the development of cancer. So her findings, what I'm just about to run through a couple of slides very quickly here. And if you wanna know more about her, you can search her on the internet or email me and I'll uh, share uh, some sources for you. But her, her work is really profound. She said that half of the secret is outside the cell. We keep looking on the inside of the cell to see what's the cancer cell doing there, but it's really the micro environment and the tissue architecture that are the ultimate regulator of the cellular function. So basically she's saying back, you know, to, to link to my, my previous slide of how we have this human pattern, how we have this um, five layers of being. And she is looking at a very microscopic view of our, our physical possibility. So here she's looking at the tissue architecture on the left side of your screen, you see a normal cell and then you see the malignant cells. She found that both cells have the exact same components except the difference is that the malignant cells have five to six times more. She asked, how are they getting the messages to upregulate like this? So I ask where in the five layers of self would a person have experienced this miscommunication? So her hypothesis, brilliant. If tissue architecture and context are the message, then tumor cells with abnormal genomes should be capable of becoming normal if the architecture is restored. She's talking about the five layers of self in, in my view. Here she shows that a normal cell, you see all the way to the left, the malignant cells in the middle, and once the architecture is restored, they've reverted to be normal cells. They stop growing, they reorganize, and now they're normal again. Here you see the malignant cells all the way at the top, and when the tissue architecture was restored, they reverted. So here is the messaging. In here's the, the, the coherence in a normal cell. In the stage two, you can see that these cells are pre-malignant. They've already lost their structure. The communication network is beginning to fail. And when they get to stage four, that there's all chaos and we have the full development of the, the malignancy. So I'm saying that I'm, I'm relating her work to our thought, our Ayurveda thinking perspective, that there's a weak connection somewhere and she's showing it at the cellular level. Just in 2020, um, from the Cymoscope lab, this was published in uh, the Water Journal, here we see the sound of a cell, a healthy cell on your left. Now this is a sound in water. This is pretty amazing because our bodies are over 70% water. So if we look at this beautiful geometry of a cell that is healthy, and then to the right, we see a cancer cell that is all skewed. It's lost its architecture. It's lost its messaging to look beautiful and radiant. So some of you are familiar, uh, Zach Bush is becoming very well known in uh, recent years for his work, but I want to just, I'm, I'm reading his quotes because he has an interesting thought here. He says, the word cancer strikes more fear into the hearts of modern man than any other disease. 
Before leaving academia in 2010, I was working to design a new generation of chemotherapy through my research at the University of Virginia. Through that research, I discovered for myself some extraordinary realities under the microscope. I'm thinking he and Mina should get together, right? <laughs> He says, cancer cells are the most isolated, damaged and fragile cells in the human body. Their mechanisms of repair are destroyed. They cannot produce adequate fuel. They have lost their cell identity and natural function. For this, we have created a $500 billion a year business that is driven by the fear of death. We are told that toxic warfare on our body is the only pathway to hope for buying us time. And yet cancer rates rise every year. Medicine is no closer to a solution for cancer than it was in the 1970s. So he's really starting to see that that 20% view, there's something beyond that. But how could we look beyond that since we continue to see cancer as the problem rather than the symptom of a body that is failing in its inherent capacity for health. We poison then rather than support, we treat rather than inspire. The first cracks in my pharmaceutical philosophy and practice of medicine developed out of the realization that there is no cancer in human history that occurred due to the lack of chemotherapy in that person. If we are not looking for a root cause in our therapies, how can they ever be successful? Step one to overcoming cancer is to love these cells back into the community of your body. If they cannot repair, they can remove themselves through aptosis or programmed suicide death, it's called in the cell cycle. And in, by this, doing this, they make room for a new stem cell activation. We are often removing cancer cells naturally from our body throughout life, not until our avenues of communication and metabolism are profoundly disrupted does cancer become a clinical problem for our bodies to handle. Cancer is just the symptom. So just before this, I mentioned that you know, there could be a breakdown anywhere. It could be in the environment from an environmental toxin. It could be from a thought process. We see a lot in our, um, in my research of uh, women who were experiencing breast cancer in the thermal images, we saw that as soon as the sound began to shift and diminish their inflammation, that there was a new connectivity and their cancer markers went down. So this is what I'm doing, okay? I'm not replacing your medical doctor, but I am sharing my experience and my research through the use of using specific sound. So, <clears throat> excuse me, here's a, inflammation is known as one of the key factors in chronic disease. And so here we have a woman with, you know, three areas of, of her body that are really on fire. And uh, on the lower screen, you see the lymph nodes. The lymph nodes are really struggling here. And, <clears throat> excuse me, in breast cancer, this is one of the first things they remove to help alleviate their body. That's in Western medicine. However, we use sound. And here she is after six weeks where all of these areas have cooled down. So now her body, her physical body has the reserves to maybe work on, on some other layer of her being. So I wanna uh, share with you briefly about George and um, his prostate cancer. He was referred to us by a personal friend, someone who owns an AMI 750. Um, he came in and he reported that he was feeling a lot of anger and going through depression as well, bouncing back and forth because of his diagnosis. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, we asked a little bit about his health, <clears throat> excuse me, his health history. In 2013, he began a new job. In 2015, he was promoted. He was really excited about being uh, head of this whole team, but 
There were some unruly team members. And so he was having added stress for that. In 2016, there was some marital distress and his wife initiated a divorce. In 2017, he lost his job to a younger team member. And the, because he was just about to lose his insurance, company, uh, uh, insurance policy through his company, um, he went for a checkup. And the reason what really prompted him to do this was also because he was having the uh, symptoms of trouble urinating, sexual dysfunction and, and pain. And his results were that he had uh, prostate cancer. So George uh, confided that he stopped exercising and he began drinking to be able to cope with this stress and that he bounces between anger and depression. He has no energy. He's you know, fatigued all the time. And he's feeling pretty angry at being abandoned by his family and the people in his life. So when we look at George in his uh, physical body, again, I've colored him red because inflammation is very fiery. And, um, you know, he's having urinary tract problems, sexual dysfunction and pain. So these are our real wake up calls in Ayurveda. We say this is the real tap on the shoulder. Let's look at the opportunity here to regain uh, some resonance, to regain the coherence of the five layers, the five bodies. In his vital energy body, he's cutting off some uh, vitality here. Uh, he's not really supporting himself by the, the drinking and the lack of exercising. And I totally understand that he doesn't feel like it. And this is a coping mechanism. And you know what? It's okay because this is, this is how he's coping. However, when we look at the five layers, uh, he's leaking here. This is not really helping him. It's actually depleting him. Um, he's got a lot of chatter of the negative thoughts of, um, you know, he lost his identity. He's no longer good enough to work at the company. Some younger guy has come in and taken his place. Uh, there's a lot of things going on here. His wife has left him. He's not worthy to be loved. A lot of things. And, um, you know, he's because of this, he's been abandoned uh, by his body and, he, and his family. So there's a lot of chatter going on. And so in Ayurveda, we would say because of his weak connection, maybe he, um, if he was seen an Ayurveda practitioner, which in this case he was not, um, he would um, begin um, maybe some breathing exercises and maybe some singing or chanting or, or prayers to, you know, get that energy, that vitality body moving. And then, of course, he's, um, you know, really feeling a loss of connection in his bliss body. So this is his program. Um, he had a six month program and uh, his uh, friend who referred him, who owns the AMI 750 actually uh, gifted him this um, device so that he could use it every day for six months. His commitment was that he had to use it twice a day. So he had to sit quietly. There was no multitasking. He couldn't be on digital media. He couldn't do He just needed to sit quietly. So this is the commitment. We um, asked him to imprint water for drinking. And I'll show you a slide in just a minute how we do that. And um, we asked him to do our sound flower experience meditation, which is just a short seven minute meditation um, to do it one or two times a day. And we asked him if he would um, work on doing some affirmations and intentions and keep a journal, which is part of our Soundflower Experience more intensive program. Um, but for the Soundflower Experience, we can, you can just watch it um, anytime. So here you can see people sitting comfortably on a chair with their feet on the device. And he would do this for 30 minutes. Um, then to imprint the water, you see the person here with a glass of water. She's imprinting the water at the very same time she's having her session. We recommend that you um, drink that water throughout the day to help support your body. Remember, your body is over 70% water. So we really want to support in that way. 
With the sunflower experience, uh, just a brief description of what that is. Um, I take the uh, five frequencies that are emitted from the AMI 750, a very specific set of five frequencies to help support the vital energy body. And so these uh, sounds are made visible through the cymoscope. And I have layered the um, symbols, the geometries in a specific form for this meditation. And so the meditation Meditation is just a seven minute meditation that anybody can do. It's really great for people who say that they don't have time to meditate or they don't know how to meditate. So this was all part of George's um, process. Now, part of the Soundflower Expensive Intensive Program, we have some requirements to uh, make this, uh, you know, we want to set ourselves up for success. So what we ask him, uh, ask everybody to do who wants to uh, really immerse themselves in like a 21 day program is to journal. And by journaling, the benefits of this is that we get to watch our thoughts. And at first, um, George was pretty resistant to this. He's kind of angry that he had to do this. And, but he said that by the end of the month, he kind of surrendered to the exercise. In the second month, he made some positive changes to his diet and he was drinking less. He um, what, said that feelings were coming up of how he was wronged throughout his childhood, throughout his workplace, throughout his um, college years, and throughout his uh, adult life. He was having an identity crisis that all these thoughts were round and round and round and he was physically and mentally exhausted. And at the end of the second month, he said, Either these thoughts were having a less charge or he was just plain worn out from them. <laughs> but uh, interesting. The third month, he reports that he has more energy, that he had been invited to a Tai Chi practice and he was connecting more with his breath. And he started to feel that the breath was actually helping to clean him out. And he began reading more philosophical books. Um, right here, I want to interject that... <clears throat> George, though he had a Western medical doctor, he had chosen the route of uh, his primary physician of a Oriental medical doctor who, and so he was doing some Chinese herbs along with the sound program. And then he would get his um, cancer markers checked uh, periodically. So I, I just wanted you to know that he's not totally uh, just <laughs> under our care. He's, um, you know, working with uh, another person uh, who's, who's the main charge cruise director. Um, so the fourth month, he says he's feeling more energy. He volunteered for a veterans program and he's made new friends in a supportive community. So we see that the ship is kind of turning around. We see this reconnection happening where he becomes more of his whole person again. It might be a new uh, person that he's just now meeting within himself because the fifth month he's having new ideas and he's creating a new business. And the sixth month he actually creates a whole new business. His friends comment that George is a changed person. His children even like being with him. His daughter says that he's less angry and more fun to be with. So there's a whole, you know, I'm just giving you the snippets of this case so you can see the, the reconnection. What I'd like to connect here, which I think relates to the earlier question, that in Ayurveda science, the experiences of trauma and fear are imprinted onto the fatty myelin sheaths of the brain. And these can be erased. In Ayurveda, we believe this because of the aspect of sound. Now I know in this presentation, I'm telling you how I work with it, with sound technology, but in the ancient tradition, there were sound and vibrations that were uh, you know, given as prescriptions uh, to people. And um, that in, uh, we can erase these, these, these impressions, uh, these unwanted impressions of trauma and fear can be uh, erased as we reconnect to our finer bodies. Um, and physically, we can see that the change in these subtle vibrations are registered in the brain. There's more nitric oxide that reduces cortisol. And you know, there's over a thousand published papers in today's journals 
uh, showing the benefits of, of meditation and how being calm is so uh, benefic uh, beneficial. In Ayurveda, the cause of disease exists where consciousness meets matter. And this is kind of a complex thing, uh, concept to grasp, but I, I just wanted people to know that in the ancient science, they do um, connect this and, and it, it's a whole complex science. And today I'm just trying to distill down to very simple concepts so that you might open, uh, be open to exploring in your own life something like this. But I just want you to know that this has been around for thousands of years. And the perception that disease is just a tap on the shoulder or an opportunity for you to change something or alter or to reconnect with yourself is exactly how Ayurveda perceives disease. So in today's science, biophotons have been shown to be affected by intention. When we're stressed out, the biophotons that are released result in antioxidation or damage, and they produce incoherent messages. And when you create a supportive intention and you meditate, you create more coherent biophotons. And this releases the coherent information that is the underpinning mechanism for healing of your body. And this is my um, reason for adding to the 21 day Soundflower Experience intensive journaling and affirmations, because if you, you'll make faster change with this. So what we want to do is set ourselves up for success. And these are, are two things that uh, really help George and some of our other um, patients and, and subjects who come into our, our studies um, get through to a, a higher quality of living and a more calm lifestyle. So uh, I'll end with this um, quote from Dr. Bruce Lipton, a stem cell biologist noted for his views on epigenetics and He's become quite famous these days. He says, the fact is that harnessing the power of your mind can be more effective than the drugs you have been programmed to believe you need. So we're, we're going into that, <clears throat> excuse me, monomaya kosha, the mental body that we need to say, hey, what is my belief system? What, what is the message that I keep saying to myself, my thoughts, my emotions keep coming back to me? What, what is that chatter that comes up for you? So I say that sound acts as a catalyst for a change in the perception. So whether you're using wonderful music that feels really good to you because you know, because you feel good. You know when music makes you feel bad. You know when somebody says something to you that it makes you feel good or bad. So what we wanna do is we wanna harness that power of sound and vibration of those words, of that surrounding um, environment. We wanna put ourselves uh, into a space where all of these bodies can once again sing in their beautiful harmony because it is a true, wonder and a beautiful experience that we can have here today. And so anyway, I want to say thank you very much. Uh, you know, my basis is to connect ancient wisdom and combine it with advanced sound technology. And, you know, if you want to know more about my products or me, please just reach out to me. My website is there. And Abe, I want to thank you and the whole network, all of your staff uh, for inviting me to share this concept. I think it's a very important concept for people to be open to a new way of thinking that Western medicine, as good as it is, it is so good, but it's only giving us 20% of the view. We need to widen our, our telescope. Thank you, Mandara. Another fantastic talk. And thank you for uh, sharing your wisdom with all our guests. Um, there are um, a few questions about, uh, you know, if um, they can purchase AMI 750, I've written the response that they can write to you on simatechnologies.com um, and uh, uh, you know, be in touch with you for uh, taking it further. 
there's so much always with every talk that you've done here over the five seasons uh, you know uh, of um, aw agora there are always questions that uh, uh, are um, you know that come up which we will continue to discuss i'm sure over the coming years because it's as you said it's very important in our zeitgeist to raise these questions to raise the awareness of all of us here right all of us who are listening all of us who are our guests our subscribers our friends our well wishes and their uh, circles so i'm very thankful to you again mandara for doing this and i'm also thankful to um, the aw agora team the producers led by justin mensch and our collaborators in this our sister company which is soul studio uh, we hope that uh, our sister company soul studio and cymatics uh, are able to work together in the near future 